Just looking at the US team, I think we have a lot of strong people. Team Europe's just, you know, I think looking a little weak, the US team just works hard. And I think that the Collins Cup kind of comes at a perfect time for us. We're all on the upswing. <laughs> We're all building into it. Triathlon was started in the U.S. It started on Fiesta Island. It was a, an American sport. It has a rich American history. I think every U.S. athlete who's out there wants to win races. It's just kind of that intangible kind of feeling and just pride. It goes back to, I think, kind of the core values that America was founded on and just being able to represent a country too that people have fought so hard to preserve. I think the U.S. could come back and dominate again. Like, why not? We got a lot of strong athletes and I know both Taylor and I, we want to win races. Taylor as a person is probably one of the most interesting human beings I've met in a long time. I don't really think I even now see myself as having a talent for triathlon. I've been told that I'm unique, but I'm not necessarily sure why or what that means. <laughs> I just want to kind of see how good I can be. I want to keep getting better. I've known Taylor since she was pretty much a teenager. So I've had the pleasure of watching her go on this journey. I love what I do every day, and I'm guessing over the course of one's career, um, the drives and motivations might change. She wants to be the best in the world, and, and I'm really hoping that she starts to dream of legacy and, and the really good things that can come to young women, young athletes. Um, through her performances, dedication, and hopefully victories. Taylor is fierce. <laughs> Way more fierce than I ever knew she had in her. And this is gonna be a really exciting next few years for us as a team with Taylor. Drop your shoulders to the ground, dad a bit. Okay, just hold that nice and strong. Taylor would kind of duck into some group workouts that I had the opportunity to work with. Um, she was surrounded by medal winners and world champions, and she was just a youngster. That's it. Much better. In order to come across the finish line in a better position, it will take, I think, learning in a lot of different areas for me. My job is to keep her well balanced so that she can continue to accept the training loads um, that are being imposed on her. And that's what's gonna make her one of the best in the world and maybe even the best that we've seen ever. At the end of 2022, the ranking in the PTO for Taylor, we wanna see Taylor as the top American, if not in the top three in the world. That has become a really prestigious place as an athlete to sit. If they're talking about number one in the world, like definitely. She's, she's not like a loud person or athlete, but her performances are loud. It's definitely fun to watch. I'm definitely shaped by my past experiences. I've learned a lot. I've had some fantastic 
coaches and teachers. My mom was very involved in my triathlon and just, well, first and foremost, bringing me to the races and finding the races. I have a great relationship with my mom and it was a great way to spend a lot of time with her and have a shared experience. We'd wake up really early, drive down, like set up our transition areas, do the race, and then tell our war stories on the way back. She's a great role model and I think getting to see her every day as an athlete is really helpful. The Olympic Games did not go how I wanted them to. It was it was very unpleasant. I, I, I really didn't like how that felt so much that I'm like, I do not want to ever feel this way again. I know I'm going to make mistakes in races, but I just don't want to make the same mistake twice. And then see, it's the relay. So. And yes, I did drop it. So I know what's mine versus my teammates. <laughs> it's good to have your mark. <laughs> I've ridden 18 days and three hours on Swift, and that's less than two years. I absolutely love Swift. In the winter, especially in Boulder, there's some weeks where I do all my riding on Swift, not feeling like you're alone for three, three and a half hours for long rides or even for recovery spins, it can be fun. I am level 42 currently, I think. My brother saw me doing this, and he's like, it's like a video game. This is like probably my first real ride back. So don't drop me, all right? You have to play nice. I warmed up before this. I'm 34 minutes into my ride, so I kind of cheated. Doing extras, I get it. That's fine. I just hopped on. I was talking with you back at, uh, what was it, Yokohama, where you kind of snuck away. You said you like to go under the radar. And I think I said in the bus too, I'm like, I don't think you're going under the radar anymore. Well, yes and no. I mean, I feel like I'm tagged in some ways, but just race through race. How do you think your race went? It was good for early season. I went like the same exact time that I did in October. And I felt like I was, you know, yeah, I was closer to peak fitness. I'm kind of starting the season a little slower, just trying to build into it because Come July with Edmonton PTO, Collins Cup, the next, the Dallas PTO, the USA one, and then World Champs in October. That's like a bunch of races you have to be ready for, so. Well, I'm psyched for them too. I mean, Edmonton, I think I've been there five times to race. That was my first Junior World Championships in 2014. And it's just a great place. And then to race in Dallas at home, that's awesome. And hopefully it's very competitive, which, just brings out the best in everyone. You have to tell me about your first Olympic experience. It was mixed, and sometimes that's more valuable. So I was not happy with my individual race, but to be on the relay team, like, that's just amazing. So I can't complain. Yeah, it was, uh, it was cool to see the U.S. represent so well again. But Taylor, you take it away with the trash talk. Who is our biggest competition in the Collins Cup? Who are you? nervous about. That's just mean. I think we're just there to execute our best on the day. It's just all about going fast, right? No matter who it is. We'll see you at the next race. Yeah. Collins Cup all the way. <laughs> I think it's every kid's dream, or at least it was mine, to be some sort of professional athlete. I grew up west of Chicago. My dad kind of dabbled in triathlon when I was really young and had some of my earliest memories um, of watching him race. I was just a competitive kid who, who really liked to race and watching him go by on the bike was just super cool. And triathlon is really the, the thing that stuck throughout everything though. I think what really sets Ben apart from the other athletes is the fact that he's mentally so tough and he's not phased by the outside chatter. I was a reporter at Fox, the local affiliate here in Phoenix, and I found out that he had qualified for uh, Rio. I remember my first impression being like, oh, he's super chill, just like really easy. When we were leaving, I was like in the car with my photographer and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, 
that's the kind of person that I want to be around. I was very realistic about my capabilities going into the Olympics and I was going very well and knew I could race at the front of the race and on a really good day could get in the top 10 and just had a, gr had a good day up until the run and had just used a lot of matches racing at the front with guys who were in their prime and I was still kind of learning and um, developing as a professional. The Olympics is a dream that you know you chase when you have an Olympic sport because it's there's nothing else like it and it's a huge honor to be able to represent your country and wear your flag, one that I really tried to cherish. He trains by himself, he pushes himself, he's super driven and he's really competitive. I think those are all really good qualities to have as a professional athlete. Being lucky enough to I think be living the American dream, doing what I love with family and a uh, little golden retriever, like all that. Like I just, again, it's, it kind of goes back to describing the Olympics. It's just kind of that intangible kind of feeling and um, just pride. You wanna move those little legs? Go ahead, go, 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 like it's walk. So I didn't realize as a parent that when you get one of these cars, you have to put them together, like basically assemble it piece by piece. It comes in like a hundred pieces. <laughs> Triathlon is, you know, our entire life. It's taken very seriously by all of us. I mean, so much so to the point where when our daughter was born, we were kind of, well, let's back up before that. We had a huge race coming up and we knew that she was supposed to be born mid-December but will our daughter be born around that time? Like, we don't know what's gonna happen. It's our first one. We ended up saying, yeah, go ahead and go to this race in Florida, early December. And sure enough, the day he got on the plane, I started having contractions. And by the way, it was two weeks early. So I didn't think that she was coming. He didn't think she was coming. And then, you know, we're debating over the phone, like, are you gonna come back? I don't know, like, I don't know if this is true labor. He missed his daughter's birth because that's like how serious we take triathlon in his racing and profession here. So it was a decision that we made together. Thankfully, he was there through FaceTime. So that's, you know, just one of the pieces that you have to deal with when you have this as a profession. Like you can't always pick and choose the race dates and what you go to. He's probably one of the best mixed team relay athletes in the world. I feel like he can just do every distance and you know that he will be good across every single discipline. And especially as a team member, you just know that he will be giving 100%. Sport has a short memory, so it's kind of like, what are you doing for me right now? What have you won? And that's kind of where a lot of people can kind of measure your worth. I guess where I fit in is I just see myself as the top end of the sport. Everybody who's on the start line is a human being and they're, they're all beatable. I hope that I have a long career in the sport um, and I'm just like, I'm grateful every time I get to line up on the start line with a healthy body excited and ready to race. I am just grateful for every opportunity I have ahead of me. First off, I hope that everybody looks at me and thinks that I'm a fierce competitor and didn't leave anything out on the course, that I respected the race and I'd like to leave the sport and the world better than you know when I came to it. When and ever I leave the sport um, professionally, that it will, uh, I will have made a positive impact. If we just keep working hard and um, let our hard work show, that's gonna translate to wins and that's what people will consider dominant. If you get better performances by each individual member because they're on a team and competing for something bigger than themselves, you'll just see better performances in the sport. A rising tide raises all ships. 